You guys have read round eight in Bodega Dreams. Now we're going to do round nine. And the title of this chapter is called Knockout, Underground Economy. Early the following Saturday morning, Sapo knocked at my door. Yo, Chino, bro, like Bodega wants to meet you at El Musa del Barrio. Like now? I asked. Yeah, now, bro. Ahora. As we exist, as the planets are, cl are circling the sun. But El Muso hasn't opened its doors yet. They'll open them for Bodega, don't worry. He likes them crazy cash. It's a waste of money if you ask me, kid. Then he spat, but as long as it's not my money. Wait, you're saying Bodega gives money to the arts? Bodega does with his money what he wants. <clears throat> I do with mine and you do with yours was all Sapple told me. I invited him inside. Come in, let me wash up. Blanca's asleep. Sapo was bemused. <clears throat> he walked in and started to look around. Like I ain't never been all the way in here and I haven't exactly missed much. Why does Bodega want to see me anyway? I already told him and when Vera is coming, like I'll be there when she arrives. I headed toward the bathroom. Fuck, should I know? I'm like the fucking IRA. I just follow orders. Bullshit, Panya. You know more than you let on. I brush my teeth real quick. Withholding if info is an advantage. Yeah? So you going to tell me how Bodega got all the power or like you going to have an advantage? No advantage there, Chino. That's no secret. Anyone in Alberio from the University of the Street knows the Italians and controlled the neighborhood. They ran the numbers. They ran the drugs. I heard Sapo sit down on the couch and turn the TV on. I wasn't worried about Blanca waking up because she slept like a rock. So, like, there were places you could burglarize, and then there were places, Italian-owned, you know, that you didn't fuck with. Yeah, that's right. There was that restaurant, that big frickin' mafia joint. Mario's, Sapo said? Yeah, that was it. Yo, that fucking restaurant... Had a three-month waiting list because it took that long to screen its guests in case they were all FBI connected. Know what I'm saying? I heard him opening the fridge. When I came out of the bathroom, Sapo had a bowl of Cocoa Puffs and was sitting in front of the TV watching cartoons. Like, this won't ruin your rep. Nah, cartoons are dope, he said. I went into the bathroom to find some clothes and mull over what Sapo had told me. And he was right. It was nothing new. The Italians ran the show. When I was a little kid, Spanish Harlem was different. Many Italians were still around. There were Italian social clubs where you'd see pink limos parked in front of pumps. There were racially segregated tenements that never rented to blacks or Latinos. The Dime Savings Bank on 105th and 3rd always had a special window where Italian men wouldn't have to wait online like everybody else. So what happened with the Italians, bro? <laughs> I asked. Sapo, when I came out, trust. Fat Tony Salerno, ever heard of him? Nah. Nigga was the big Don. Yeah? That nigga was indicate, indicted, in, indict, indicated on charges of racketeering. The judge post bailed. At two million, and his boys ran down to court and paid it in cash. Now that's serious money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. That was on the news. That nigga had to sell some of his tenements to pay for all his lawyer's fees. But he still got sentenced to 175 years. That's right. And after that, the Italians weren't so sacred. And with the big white shark out of Dibway, you had all these little guppies jocking up for power. And Bodega won? With Nazario's help, yo, like... I took all your milk, he said, getting up and placing the empty bowl in the sink. That's wild, bro. Bodega won. Yeah, now, like, you ready? Because I got things to do, and Bodega is waiting for you. As we walked out, Sapple yelled toward the bedroom, loud enough to wake Blanca. Bendicion. Then he laughed. You crazy, bro. What the fuck are you? She ain't your mother. I said as I quickly locked the door and ran downstairs. We got into Sapo's car, run down, rode down Fifth Avenue, 
Yo, Sapo, you know anyone who's hard up to get married? Girls, plenty. Guys, none. Why you ask? Blanca's trying to get some girl a green card. Get the F out of here. Yeah, so if you know someone, well, I know this sad junkie. We can make him go cold turkey for a day or two. He'd do anything for a fix. No, junkies, man. She'd be better off in Colombia. Then what the heck do you want? Where do you think you live in, at? You think you gotta find some gay mother effer who has to marry some bitch or his rich father will disown him? I don't think so. If she wants to stay in the country, she better take the junkie. Never mind, I asked. That was stupid. Why'd I even try? Nazario might help, nigga. I know knows everything. Sapo advised. But I shook it off. I was already tangled up with Bodega. I didn't want to get mixed up with Nazario, too. Sapo stopped the car in front of El Musio del Barrio. And I got out. Yo, I'll see you, like... Lara. Chino. See you, man. One last thing, Sapo. One last thing, Sapo said. Like, I'm gonna ask you a favor. So what else is new? I still got your shit in my house and you need that back. Not yet, Chino. What I'll, what I'll need from ya is something small. Real small. Like the day you just wanted me to walk with you because some niggas were eyeing you bad. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Well, it'll be even smaller than that. And Sapo took off. I walked to the side of the building where the entrance was that month that month because the front entrance was being renovated. I was locked. I pat on the door and a guard walked over and stood by the glass doors that separated us. Mumzia di- is not open yet. He yelled through the glass. Wait, I'm supposed to meet someone there. Who? Willie Bodega, I said. And he looked around and he went back inside to check on this. I looked across towards Central Park. It was a beautiful day. Blue Jays were making noise. The trees were getting back there. Leaves. And I was thinking of maybe later taking... Talking a walk, taking a walk in the park with Blanca when the guard returned. Sorry about that. He had a smile on his face and started to unlock the door. You know that I shouldn't let you in, anyone inside yet, but since you're a friend of Willie, I'll let you in, okay? He shook my hand, nearly pulling me inside. He pointed to where I could find Bodega. I saw Bodega standing in front of a painting by Jorge Soto, a large canvas portraying as transparent Adam and Eve with blood running through their bodies as if they were subjects in an anatomy textbook. I stood next to Bodega. Even though he knew I was there, he studied, he's studying the painting. He didn't greet me, just pointed it at him. This man right here, he had it all. Couldn't even talk with God. But it meant nothing to him with, without her. I hear you, I said. So like Bodega... I already told you Vera is going to be here next week. I'll be here. I'll be there with you when she arrives. So why you wanted to meet me here today? Because, Chino, I'm going to ask you for something when Vera comes. And I thought you should know me. Besides, I'm going to marry her this time. And that means we're going to be related. And you're good people. What? You're going to what? Marry her, of course. What do you think I went through for all this? Look, man, what do you want to do with Vera? Whatever you want to do with Vera is your thing. I'm just keeping my part. But, like, Vera is already married. I know that, he said. His mood changed. He gazed at me with the confidence of someone who has marked the deck. That doesn't matter to you at all, I asked. What if it doesn't, what if she doesn't want to leave her husband? Of course she'll leave that peño. She never wanted to marry him in the first place. It was her effing mother who pushed her. He slowly walked away from her, me to stand in front of another painting. It was titled Desperta Boraca and depicted a Tanyo Indian tied to a New York City fire hydrant. So much was promised to us when we left our island, he said softly as he looked at the painting. They gave us citizenship and then sent us to the garment district. I'm going to make sure they make good on their promises. Did you ever meet Vera's husband, Willie? I asked. Meet him? No, but I knew his family was one of the people that escaped Castro in 58. No shame in that, but his family was rich because they had supported Batista with a crap load of money. 
and they had siphoned off the people of Cuba. His eyes left the painting and looked at the floor. The tiles were beautiful, new. El Museo del Bello had just gotten a facelift. The floors were shining. The walls a cool, soothing white. And the titles of the paintings were written in Spanish, with the English translation as a secondary thing. It felt good to be there. El Museo del Bello was the only museum where I could look at the paintings without having a guard follow me from wing to wing. At the Met... I got suspicious looks. First, the guards checked my shoes to see if they were once L alligators. When they saw my worn sneakers, they treated me like I might pull a knife from my back pocket and go slashing Goyas. See, Chino, back then, politics was all I knew. I tried to explain to Veronica who this guy she was going to marry was. The reason he was rich, I was telling her, he was not a friend of the people right up to the night before the wedding. Do you know what she said? What? She said she loved me. She said she didn't care if I didn't have any money. The problem was she said I didn't have any vision of how to get it. She said she wouldn't mind being poor for a few, year, few, for a few years. But since I only had a vision for political stuff, I was going to be poor for the rest of my life. And then her mother came out and yelled for her to get back inside. Her mother looked at me like I had leprosy. So I left thinking, shit, that bitch just don't deserve me. I thought the young lords were going to succeed and that she had missed her chance at history. But a couple hours later, Chino, I was in tears. And not that much mattered. I didn't say anything. And silence overtook us. I guess if I had been old enough back then, I would have felt the same way he did. Back then, when Bodega was a teenager, the Young Lords were an urban guerrilla group that had its origins in Chicago, but they made all their noise in El Barrio. They wrote up a manifesto called the 13-point program and platform. The first point was to free Puerto Rico from the United States. The second point was for all Latin countries to have self-determination. They wanted better neighborhood programs. They launched food drives. Not cl cl ugh. They launched food drives, clothing drives, health inspection drives, door-to-door -door clinics. They were many. They were young. They were educated. And they were armed. They took over a red brick Methodist church at 111th and Lexington and made it a conference center by declaring the people's church. The Young Lords Party was also ahead of its time. Point number five of the manifesto stated, Down with the machismo. And male chauvinism. This was due in part to the fact that half of the central committee was composed of women who, along with the men, developed strategies and carried guns. I listened to I listened as Bodega described how he went preach he would preach these points to Vera, telling her that Latin women were undergoing a revolution and that this would force the Latin men to change the, their his ways and reinvent himself. Bodega wouldn't preach these points eloquently. But he would speak of them with so much passion and street into intellect that Vera fell madly in love with him. She liked his ideas, his conviction, his optimism. Bodega would invite her to rallies to the Lord's headquarters at 202 East 117th, to Marxist education classes, to urban military tactics classes, to food drives. Veronica would attend and at times even help out with breakfast programs and clothing drives. But what Veronica really wanted was for Bodega to find a real job and marry her. How old were you back then? It was the only thing I could think of saying. I don't know. Let me think. 17. I was 17. So you left Veronica. You were angry at her and everybody. And then what happened? We both began to walk around El Museo. Crazy shit. Some crazy shit. It was like 3 in the morning. I climbed up the fire escape to her room. I tried opening the window, but... There was a gate. So I tapped on the glass and Veronica woke up thinking it was a thief and I scared her half to death. That was smart, bro. Couldn't you wait till morning or something? Nah, I couldn't because she was getting married the next day and if her mother had woken up, you know, it would have been over. So I almost gave Veronica a heart attack until she realized it was me. She knew I, would, I could never hurt her. <clears throat> and she was a little scared. But it wasn't because I was there. It was because she was marrying some guy she didn't love. You sure she didn't at least like his money? Didn't I just tell you she said she didn't care that I didn't have money? 